happening the hood. Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. We are returning to this 3.8 liter V6 GM engine located inside of a 2002 Pontiac Firebird. It's been affectionately named the Ferrari Bird due to its Ferrari components. It's a custom thing regular people would not understand. Anyway, this is the part two video of this particular vehicle. It comes to us due to a series of massive engine oil and engine coolant leaks. We had actually found oil inside of the cooling system. And that is because of uh, the single fatal flaw on these particular engines. And that flaw is these lower intake manifold gaskets where the manifold will bolt to the cylinder head. There are air ports running through, and then there are coolant jackets that also run through. And what happens is the gasket material right here de uh, deteriorates and comes apart and that causes coolant to enter into the intake valley and then it just drains down into the oil system. And because the two systems are pressurized at two different times, oftentimes you can find where the oil can also be forced into the cooling system and uh, causing uh, further contamination. So what we've done is pulled the top side of this engine apart, pulled the valve covers off to reseal the gaskets, and we're going to get this thing sealed back up, back together, cleaned up, degreased in great shape and back out on the road. So after the teardown yesterday, we went ahead and pulled out all the old components, stripped them as much as possible, cleaned up all of the gasket material and nasty buildup over in the parts washer. And we are now prepped and ready to reinstall these components. As you can see, the lower intake manifold was super encrusted with coolant and oil and varnish and who knows what else made its way out into that thing. It's been cleaned off and scrub brushed as best as possible. We went and blew the thing out, washed it off with the hose, cleaned off as much as the sludge and build up, and again, the coolant residue as possible, and we are now prepping everything for reinstallation. We have a series, or a set of new valve cover gaskets. We also have the seals for the bolts that uh, bolt the valve cover assemblies down. We've got an intake manifold gasket set. We have a new thermostat. We have new radiator hoses because the hoses on this vehicle have been contaminated with oil from the inside and they're quite spongy and soft. So we're gonna get rid of those as well. Additionally, the fuel injectors have also received a new set of O-rings. So the only thing at this point that has not been cleaned off is the engine block. So let's go ahead and get into this valve cover gasket set. Oddly enough, they're Felpros, but they're not blue. I hope they're still good. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna get these guys set up on the covers, and of course, the bolts with the, uh, the new bushings to go with them. I put the bushings on the bolts when you guys weren't looking. So what I'm thinking here, we'll use that little tang right there for a reference, because there's a indentation in the cover. We'll stick them in just like so. Going all the way around the perimeter. We're paying attention to the formation of the gasket so as to not get this in the wrong place. Set that up very nice like. It's good. Give it a flip. And we'll stick the bolts in. Okay, second cover is all prepped up and ready to rock and roll. Let's head over to the engine and get all this stuff installed. All right, so I'm thinking hard side first, and that's gonna be the passenger side over here. If you guys recall from the first video, which by the way, I will leave a link down inside of this video's description that will go back in time to the first video on this, uh, on this car. If you'll recall in that video, those of you that saw it, the uh, rear bolt in the back corner was a bear to get to because of that silly little bracket that's back there. And I did not enjoy myself trying to get that thing apart. Okay, let's get this thing kind of screwed in and torqued down a little bit. 
these are shouldered bolts on this cover. So they can only provide so much clamping force against the cylinder head. Meaning that the tightness of said bolt does not dictate how tight the cover clamps down on the head because the threads bottom out on the shouldered section. I'm torquing these to the good and tight spec. There we go. And of course, there's that one out back, that bear of a fastener. But I know where it is, so I'll get it. That was it. Now, since I need to get that a little bit tighter, pull the ratchet out, electric ratchet. I'll go in here with the regular ratchet and just give it a 1 64th of a turn. Get on there. There we go, click. Nice and tight like. Oh yeah, yeah, that was Mavis. They wanted, uh, they wanted me to be clean shaven at all times to present a professional appearance to the customers that should not have been in the shop to begin with. A failed, oh, click. failed interview process is what that was, sir. Okay, one is done. Let's scooch on over some here and we'll get this side back together. I've already gone through and wiped up the ceiling surface on the cylinder head. That was designed to save us a little bit of time here. I hope it uh, satisfies you regarding the, the need to witness the cleanliness. Well, you know, you can't please everybody. That's just how it is. Clicks. I mean, I try, but unfortunately, when you're dealing with numbers, there's always going to be a certain amount of returns or complaints or dissatisfied patrons. Tickets. There we go. Okay, let's give it a rinse. See what sections we miss. And yes, I realize there is great clean going down into this engine. It's fine though. I can do that. Engines love to run on brake clean. It's kind of shiny. It's like semi shiny. The passenger side gets a similar treatment. Hose off the debris here. Oh no, I'm running out, Dave, another! <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll rinse out the valley. Any dirt that went in there is gonna get washed down into the pan, and then that in turn gets drained out with the oil.
get the intake runner plugs out of there and we'll blow these out. I saw something fly out of there. Oh no, that one's stuck. I pushed it too far down. I'll get it out of there. Come here. There's that one. Last one off in the corner. shiny-ish surfaces are prepped ports are clean let's start getting this thing ready for a reseal okay we're going to need the block seals next that's going to be these ones right here um, when you get the set of gaskets they come with two different styles uh, i don't know what these blue ones are for i have never had to install that style ever it's always been these ones with the lip right here now what you're supposed to do is get these things ready and on the uh, on the block surfaces right here it comes on it goes on that section and on that section in the back we're gonna wipe that down real nice because a little bit of silicone RTV sealant has to be placed uh, at the corners for this thing to seal properly so what we'll do is we'll get these guys set up see the little triangle piece on the end there we've got to slip that under the head gasket and then those two little pegs align it on the block the manifold and coolant gaskets are also located with these little pegs and those fit inside those little holes in the head there so we'll just stick those pegs in the hole like so and then orient this stuff properly so it's all aligned then we'll have to come back in with the uh the sealant and seal up the corners. That one's gonna go here. The only place you have to put sealant is on the corners. Nowhere else on this uh, particular setup. Oh look, that thing is full of carbon or whatever and the peg thing doesn't fit. Let's clean that out. Dig all that sludge out of there. Uh oh, I dropped it, but I see it. Yeah, there it is. Got it. try this again. I'm not whispering to you guys, I'm just laying on my chest over the front of this car here. There we go, good, good, good. Now, because of the fact that I did come in here and dump a bunch of brake clean into this valley, I'm gonna pour some oil in over the lifters and in the valley just to give everything a decent little rinse right here. Just recoat it all in some oil. Anything that's contaminating this valley is gonna get washed down, rinsed out, and again, it'll all end up in the pan where it will be drained.
sounds good. Okay, let's go ahead and get the sealant in position here. What I'm gonna do is I want some under, I messed that all up, didn't I? I wanna get a piece in the corner under those gaskets, and then I'll put some on top of those gaskets as well. That way that whole corner is encompassed or encased or it's got sealant on it. So I'm trying to get out of here. A little bit right there in the corner. back in and put that valley gasket in position again that's how she goes And a piece right there. A little much, but that's fine. Okay, so that's the rear side. We're gonna do the same thing right here on the front side. I got some thingy prints on it, but that's okay. Good. All right, we are ready to rock and roll with this lower intake. Okay, manifold's coming in here. It's been cleaned up and dried off and blown out and ziz wheeled and everything else. So I think we're ready to get this in position. not smear the gaskets around and mess this up. Oh, look, I got a connector stuck back here. Gravity. Set her down. Okay, that's in position. So we need to go ahead and get all the fasteners in and get this stuff torqued before all of that sealant sets up. We cannot have the sealant hardening before this thing is clamped down. And this is definitely one of those cases where you've got to have all the bolts in before applying torque because this thing does fit fairly loosely on the, uh, the engine here. right there one right down here that you can't really see there's a couple that you can't see that one inside and then out back I recall there's also a couple that are inside. You can't see it, but I can feed it. Very good. Okay, that one's in. And I'm missing one in this back corner right down here. 
around the back. Again, you can't see it, but I know it's there. Okay, all the lower bolts are kind of in position. Let's come in here with the uh, little ratchet, snug these guys down. Beginning electron semi clip. Okay, time for actual pickages here. We are seeking 11 foot pounds of torque. I had to use the 3 8 wrench because the quarter inch does not go up to that amount of torquage. That one's good. I actually set it for 12 foot pounds of torque, by the way. I couldn't help it. Fantastic, I think we got them all. Let's go back to the first two and recheck them, yep. The first four or whatever, for all of them, yep. Good. Pretty good, pretty good, yep. Got all the ones on the inside, yep. That one in the back on the inside. Got them a little bit more, we're good. And the one, I don't know if I got that one down there. Yeah, I got that one too. Okay. Yep, all set, everybody's torqued. Floor intake is installed, good to go. All right, let's crack open another gasket set here. We've got the big O-ring gasket and the little one that we found earlier that was all folded sideways. That one's gonna set in right there. This one is gonna set right here. Dude. And then the big old paper gasket. It's gonna go right over there, so the upper intake has something to seal against. Okay, so our upper manifold is coming in here. See the bottom of it's already been cleaned off. We're just gonna go ahead and maneuver this guy very carefully so as to not disrupt or disturb the O-rings and or tear this paper gasket. Set this guy down in position. Right there. Beautiful. Now we left off by removing those 10 millimeter bolts. So we'll start with these 10 millimeter bolts. Let's get those guys threaded in. Then we'll go around the perimeter and get the remaining bolts in. So we're uh, kind of like sort of in the home stretch here, but not all the way. And when I made a mistake and didn't tie them down that bolt right there. No worries, I'll, I'll swing back to that one and get it later with a wrench. I don't want to take this, this uh, intake back out. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard, but I just don't feel like it. So I'm not going to. And of course, that sneaky one way out in the back corner back there. Can't forget you. Up here on the front corner, we've got the big tall one. Drop that one in. 
couple more on this side. I do not believe these are fastened to a, a torque spec, or a, a, a foot pound torque spec, rather. I think these are definitely an inch pound torque spec. And of course that last one, way out back. It's gonna get the good and tight torque spec because I'm not fitting a wrench back there. No, 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 no. There we go. Okay, eight millimeter. Well, that didn't work. Too weeby wobbly. Pre-click. Before we start torque wrenching the others. And as for that pesky little bowl, problem solved. All right, let's go ahead and get the fuel rail and injectors in position next here. I've applied some lubricant to the uh, the new O-rings that are on these injectors. So now we'll just kind of slip this thing back in and get uh, get these guys lined up with their holes in the lower intake. All six up simultaneously. Then we can get this guy bolted down. There we go. Fell right in, no problem. Give it a push, that is secure. So now we'll throw the nuts over the injector hold down brackets and tighten these guys up next. Or tighten them down next. We'll tighten them up and tighten them down. Yes. And then another one way out back. Yeah, I know we're uh, we're running out of light back there. But uh, that's just how it is. Kickage. Uh, fit. Good. And two more nuts on this side. That secures our fuel injector and fuel rail. Let's get uh, some wires connected here. I think that harness goes over. That's how we found it. And I believe we found it with this wire going between these two uh, fuel, fuel lines here. I think that's how it goes. We'll check that later to make sure that's the, actually the best fit for this situation. I think it is, but you never know. Someone may have uh, done that uh, incorrectly in the past. <sighs> kind of like how I plugged in these t this injector wire. It goes on this side of the harness. There we go. Clip all that stuff back together all nice like. Beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the brake booster to its vacuum line. That's out of the way and complete. Uh, let's see, next we have the map sensor, which was on that side of the intake, but you can see it's got this vacuum line, which is going to run around the back of the intake and it plugs into the fuel pressure regulator right here in front of us. So, plug that guy in. And then we'll go around to the passenger side here and connect or plug in that uh, little manifold business back there. 
kind of thing with the two bolts. And this, uh, this thing right here. Wiggle that guy in. This is the one that had those two uh, little goofy Torx bolts that I said was gonna be fun to put back in later. Well, now it's later and we're putting them back in. So yeah, that's the easy one. The other one on the back side may not be as fun. Yeah, there's the bolt hole. I can I can feel it. Here comes the bolt. Yeah, the, it's on like the bottom side right here, and there's a vacuum T that sticks out from the back of this little plastic business or whatever. It's kind of in the way. Got it. All right, that one threaded. Yay, we're getting somewhere. Back one and the front one. Sick. Sweet. Vacuum line that plugs in right here. Now we're getting places. We're running out of stuff to connect. Map sensor connector. That goes there, that's all good. So we're left with an alternator wire. And these three injectors are in, all bolted down. No more connectors or wires, that's all good. Beautiful. Returning to the driver's side, we've got the EGR valve bracket. It's got two studs that stick out of the head and then the, uh, what you call it? bolt down there at the bottom that screws it on to the exhaust manifold. Get that guy started. Couple nuts on those studs to secure the bracket. You can't see them, they're down under there, but they are here. Get on there, thank you. Click. That's the bolt holding the EGR tube to the manifold. So now, let's see, I need to get a 13 over that stud right there to hold this harness in position. There's a rando nut, throw that one on there. I think at this point, uh, it's time to get the EGR valve back into place right here. Let's just go ahead. Drop that guy down. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. There's also the tube. Let me make sure. We should do the tube first. I'm not so concerned about the top, but the bottom definitely has to go in first. Click. Now the valve. And then two nuts for the valve.
good kick. See, that's the connector, but I'm gonna hold off on that until I get the uh, thermostat back into place. So let's see about that thermostat and housing while we're here. I need to go ahead and pull the hose off of it because it's spongy and I'm getting new ones. That's for later. It's on there pretty good too. How about that? Remember the pick. How spongy this hose is. It's like butter, like swollen butter. Come off, seriously? There. Got it. Okay, so we got a new thermostat with gasket. I'm gonna drop that guy in. Put the air bleed hole at the top. Yeah, see that right there, a little hole? That's so air can uh, escape past the thermostat when it's closed. This guy slips in right here. Where's those bolts at? I think we had a, a long one and a short one, if I remember, right? Yeah, because the long one was part of bolting down the manifold. Yep, and then the short one just kind of held onto the housing. I remember. Get in there, Bolt. It was going just fine, and then it was like, nah, never mind. Okay, short one. Click. Twice clickage, there we go. EGR tube is going to get plugged in next. Just shove it in the hole there. And then find wherever its bolt went. I think it's this long one, right? It was it a long one or a short one? It's a short one. That's the downside of flexing this hose around so much is now it's uh, slightly deformed. It'll be okay. Just have to deal with that for the time being. The limited time. Package. There we go. And we have a, an emissions valve that's gonna go right here. Purge valve install complete. This is good. I think that's kind of gonna wrap it up for this side. Let's get some of these connectors reconnected. That one goes right in there. There we go. And then this one, if I recall, went up to the air intake. That's the temperature sensor probe connector. So we'll get that later. Alrighty folks, I think we're at a pretty decent stopping point at this point on this particular car. I do have some other stuff to handle on this vehicle. It's not complete yet. Uh, we've got knick-knacky items like the ignition coils and the wires, uh, the belts and the hoses. I've got to get the tensioner on there, the two bypass elbows that go on, and then I'm going to dump some cleaner business inside of this radiator and perform a serious cooling system flush on this unit in order to try to get all that oil and uh, nasty business out of there because it's going to wreck the hoses and they're already wrecked and I don't want to wreck the new hoses. So we're going to try to clean all that out and of course we have to reassemble the engine. I've got to drain the nasty contaminated oil out of this unit and uh, uh, at that point I guess we can start the car and recheck it and see how, uh, see how it's going to run and if it's going to leak. But 
I have to save that one for another video because this one is beginning to reach its limit with regards to time frame. And I know you guys like hour long videos, but uh, I, I try to I try to get them like right in the 40 to 42 minute mark. That seems to be the happy place for uh, for most viewers. So anyway, guys, having said all that uh, again, and as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this project and this Fiero bird in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a video in the 3800 Series 2 V6 lower intake manifold gasket reseal operation in a day in a transmission.